how was this patient managed? So this patient uh, ultimately needed an auriculectomy as his uh, primary surgical option. And the patient, uh, perhaps understandably, did not want to have that surgical uh, treatment and therefore underwent treatment with simiplomab uh, in an every two week uh, fashion. So it would be great if you could review to us the phase two data with simiplomab uh, in locally advanced disease. Yeah, so we, we have some recent data. This uh, comes within the last uh, couple of years. Uh, looking at simiplomab in a locally advanced population. And locally advanced in this particular study was focused on those that could not be removed with surgery. Those patients were then given every two weeks simiplomab for 96 weeks. In general, as you'd expect in this kind of a trial, these were generally healthy patients in terms of that inclusion criteria. There were a couple of key exclusion criteria. One is an obvious one in terms of thinking about our immunosuppressed population, solid organ transplants, that this type of therapy may lead to rejection in those patients in, uh, as they have to come off of their immunosuppression. The second group that was excluded is our patients with hematologic malignancies, especially those patients with CLL. That's an important thing to note because this is an important population for high-risk cutaneous squamous cell. So that population was excluded from this trial. If we look at that study, uh, one of the key things is recognizing that about 70% of these patients are from the head and neck region, which fits with the demographic we'd expect for these types of tumors, the vast majority occurring in the head and neck region because of sun exposure. Uh, many of these patients had actually had some form of treatment before, including previous radiation or a systemic treatment. And the study was broken down into both those patients with locally advanced as well as uh, regionally and distant metastatic disease. But focusing specifically on the locally advanced population, uh, there were uh, uh, 26 patients overall in this uh, part of the phase one study uh, with locally advanced disease. And about 50% of them had uh, a good response. And so as we think about uh, response for these patients, we want to think about who's having complete responses, partial responses, stable disease. Each one of those is important for this locally advanced population. These tumors can cause significant symptoms. And so even responses short of a complete response is important. 13% of these patients had a complete response, about a third of them had a partial response, and another third had stable disease. So disease control uh, in this trial was excellent, and almost 80% of these patients having either uh, stable disease or at least some type of response. Of those who had a response, they, many of them had an excellent durable response, a 63% uh, durable response, meaning at six months, that response had held up. In terms of your practice in the clinic, uh, um, Dr. McCain, what type of responses to semiplumab uh, do you expect in a patient like this? I would say with patients like this, clinically, you can sometimes see very nice dramatic responses even within the first several months. Um, I think one thing that we've learned both from the clinical trial and from um, patients treated clinically, um, sometimes you can see patients that will have a slight increase um, in tumor and it can become a challenging situation to decide if that's true progression versus that's just inflammation of the tumor. Um, but I think what we've seen is to continue treating those patients and see if that um, response presents itself and the patient does end up having shrinkage. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in your practice, does this happen, let's say, within the first few weeks or, or how soon do you think uh, it usually happens to think it potentially is pseudoprogression? Um, what, what I've seen is that these patients, the, the tumors will kind of increase early, very early on, um, and so it's not necessarily something that I've, I've seen kind of very, very late, you know, eight months in, that they're increasing in size and um, would then still be kind of a tumor infiltration is what I've seen. And, and the general thought is it's potentially inflammation, it's immune infiltration, increased T-cell infiltration, let's say, and other factors leading to this uh, uh, kind of... Uh, uh, transient uh, growth in size followed by shrinkage. And have you used semiplumab in your practice? 
I have, and I found that it's been very well tolerated by patients. Uh, the side effect profile is very similar to other anti-PD-1s, and so I, I am able to use those same ex expectations of side effects seen from the clinical trial and with other anti-PD-1s. And how long do you continue treatment with sevaprilab in a patient like this? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's challenging um, because, you know, looking long-term for patients that are able to um, have a nice dramatic response, a lot of it comes down to conversations with those patients and say, how well are you tolerating um, and how comfortable are you with um, discontinuing tr continuing treatment if you've been able to achieve a, a CR versus uh, continuing therapy up to a year, maybe even two years for patients that may still have some uh, residual disease. You can also consider if there is some disease, what appears to be disease, they're rebiopsying and seeing if this is still active tumor. So it, it appears, obviously, especially in the locally advanced cases where potentially surgery and maybe radiation therapy could still be an option to achieve a CR. We understand that you know a group of patients will achieve CR, but not everybody. So taking the patient back to the multidisciplinary tumor board involving the multidisciplinary discussion appears to be very important and in my experience I've had patients who you know went back and we did surgery after an initial response uh, if we did not achieve a CR for example.